travel in Florida for business or pleasure, always rent your excitement from budget. For $29.95 a day or $129 a week, you can rent a thrill, a Dodge 600 convertible, or a dream, a luxurious Chrysler Fifth Avenue for the same price as a run-of-the-mill compact. Thrills and dreams from budget. At $29.95 a day, it's almost a shame to go home. If your transmission ever falls apart, there's only one place you should go to put it back together. Ampco. Why go anywhere else? Get the final word in sports, Sunday at 11.15. They were considered the kings of the air, the best career passers in college history. Mark Herman, the slender rifleman from Purdue. Stanford's John Elway, he of the quick feet and quicker release. There was Jim McMahon, the BYU great, who was number two. And alone at the top at the start of this year stood Duke's Ben Bennett. And then along came the crown prince named Flutie. Too small, said the critics, as he pushed by Herman. Too fragile, said others, as he scrambled and dodged and weaved his way past Elway. Always a criticism, and yet up the lottery rose, past McMahon and even Bennett to number one, the top career passer in college history. Electrifying, charismatic, and devastating. He is admired by teammates and fans alike. And when it's all said and done, he'll most likely leave this game with something the others never captured, the Heisman Trophy. Today, Doug Flutie and his Boston College teammates face an angry Miami Hurricane team who have a pretty fair country quarterback themselves by the name of Kozar, Bernie Kozar, tall and strong arm. This sophomore signal caller can throw with the best of them, and if the Eagles are not careful, Kozar will take them deep for six. With their talented core of receivers, the Canes are a threat from any point on the field. Flutie versus Kozar, a duel at high noon between two of college football's top quarterbacks as Boston College beats the Hurricanes of Miami, live from the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. CBS Sports presents College Football. Live from the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida, it's the Eagles of Boston College versus the Miami Hurricanes. Today's game is sponsored by the 1985 Jetta, the new affordable German road car from Volkswagen. The U.S. Army, a place to be all you can be. And by Liberty Mutual Insurance Company, we're going to be there for you. So it is Boston College against Miami, and this is not a Chamber of Commerce weather day in South Florida. It has been raining hard throughout most of the day, and of course, Doug Flutie and Bernie Kosar will be affected by that wind that has been gusty. Kosar, the young man who is now getting ready for his confrontation against Doug Flutie. A year ago as a freshman, he led the Hurricanes to a national championship. And across the way in the Boston College locker room, Doug Flutie, who could be just a week away from earning the Heisman Trophy, is getting ready now to bring the Eagles out for their battle here against the Hurricanes in the Orange Bowl. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I am Brent Musburger, and what a confrontation this should be. Boston College, of course, headed for the Cotton Bowl, where they will probably be taking on Texas, although the Longhorns still have to get past Baylor and Texas A&M. As for the Hurricanes of Miami, they're angry, I said earlier. That's because they were humiliated a couple of weeks ago by Maryland. Opened up a 31 to nothing lead and then lost the game 42 to 40. And as a result, instead of going to the Orange Bowl, where they had an opportunity to defend their national championship, they have had to settle for the Fiesta Bowl. So many confrontations today. A pleasure to be working with Eric Parsegan and Pat Hayden. And Pat, we have got two coaches here who have done superb jobs. Well, Jack McNellis had a re remarkable success at Boston College. Two years ago, he led them to their first bowl game in 40 years. Last year, they won the Lambert Trophy, signifying the best team in the East. This year, they'll be playing on January 1st, and they win another Lambert Trophy. He's done two things in tandem, which are difficult to do in college football, Brent. He is one, and he's won so in an exciting fashion. Now, Jimmy Johnson, well, he 
he's had an ex exceptional year at Miami as well. He came here under adverse circumstances, inherited Howard Schnellenberger's staff, didn't have a spring practice. They're defending national championships team. They've won eight games against very stiff competition. All right, Pat, I look forward to hearing what you're going to say about Flutie and Kosar, and I want to know what the coach has got to say about how we're going to stop these two quarterbacks, and we'll have that story when we continue after this commercial and a message from your local stations. It's a Radio Shack Merry Christmas. I got my kids a robot for Christmas. Radio Shack's Armatron, a robotic arm that works just like a robot. Play laboratory and simulate scientific experiments. Move game board pieces. Or test your speed and skill doing delicate operations with the globes, canisters, or cones that come with it. It's fun. In fact, I decided the two would be twice as much fun. Armatron, just $31.95, only at Radio Shack. I need some last-minute gifts. You? Curtis Mathis backs everything with a four-year warranty. Everything? Then I'll take these stereos, VCRs, cameras, portables, consoles. How did you? Everything. Uh, delivery and installation are included. Oh, tonight I'll handle those details. Of course. Hey! Merry Christmas! This is CBS. Attention Medicare recipients. Taking care of yourself is important. And so is being able to visit the doctor whenever you need to. That's for sure. That's why the federal government has awarded a special contract to international medical centers. Now, if you're eligible for Medicare, you'll want to learn more about this program called the Gold Plus Plan, with benefits like free prescriptions, free doctor's visits, free hospitalization, eyeglasses, routine dental care, and much more. Call for a free brochure on how Medicare benefits can be improved by joining international medical centers. Get the facts. I did. When they asked me to talk to you, I talked to them. And I feel good knowing you can get all your medical care free with the United States government behind it. Call toll-free 1-800-462-2273 and find out how you can start getting your health care benefits with the IMC Gold Plus Plan. Call toll-free 1-800-462-2273. That's 1-800-462-2273. Jack Nicholson stars Sunday on Channel 4. We are back live at the Orange Bowl. And you know, back in the 40s, a coach by the name of Frank Leahy took the Boston College Eagles to one bowl after another. Now it is Jack Bicknell and Doug Flutie who are taking this team to the Cotton Bowl. Position this afternoon, the Hurricanes of Miami, the defending national champions, who of course will not repeat. Their coach a year ago was Howard Schnellenberger. Now it is Jimmy Johnson who is directing this football team. And you know, you're going to see one of the most exciting players ever in college football. That is five foot nine inch Doug Flutie. What can we expect? But don't forget the three quarters. <laughs> don't forget the three quarters. He's very upset with you. Would you be surprised if I said Doug Flutie was going to throw the ball a lot today? What Doug Flutie likes to do is line up in a lot of different formations, send people in motion, drop back and find the open man. He's thrown to 13 different receivers this year, and today he's going to spread the ball around a lot. Reminds me a lot of the offense we all used to play in sixth grade out in the front yard, but he gets the ball in the end zone. And uh, how do you uh, stop Doug Flutie? When I found out that was my assignment, I immediately thought about the Miami coaches, the defensive coaches and players, and I thought, well, maybe we ought to know their religious preference because if you're a Catholic, you can say a Hail Mary and a Protestant and our father. But on a more serious note, I think Jim Johnson, the Hurricane coach, put it pretty well. He says, we can't stop Flutie. We've got to slow him down. And how do they plan to do that? They're going to stay in a three deep, not to give the big play. They're going to try to hide their coverages if they possibly can to confuse him. And out of their seven-man front, they're going to rush four. 
four, but they'll be different people. They're not going to blitz a whole lot, and they have one special defense that they call the cop, where number 58 Fleming will mirror Flutie, particularly when he's flushed out of the pocket. We'll see how that works. All right, there's the mirror man down there. Now, what about Big Kozar? What can we expect from him? Well, Brent, when you've seen Flutie scramble and use different formations, Bernie Kozar takes a different approach but gets the same kind of results. He's going to come up in one or two basic formations. Watch his eyes because he's going to autobize an awful lot. He wants to get the ball to his wide receivers early in the football game. When they double them, to autobize, get the ball to his tight end, Willie Smith, who's caught 62 passes this year. And, Errol, what about the B.C. defense? Well, it's amazing the similarity between the two defensive philosophies. They're going to stay in a three deep. They've used some two deep and burned by it. They're going to stay in a three deep. They're going to try to camouflage and hide their coverages if they can. They're not going to blitz a whole lot. And they have one special deal. They're going to knock their two tackles down over the guards to draw the block and put their great nose man, Mike Ruth, right over Sinclair, the Hurricane Center, and try to get the Kosar. We'll follow that as the game unfolds to see whether or not it works. All right, so throw another log on the fire. Pull up your favorite chair. Here comes Doug Flutie. We got excitement coming your way from the Orange Bowl in Miami in just a moment. I thought you had practice today. No, nah, the field was too wet. Dad, do you have a minute? What's up? Dad, I'm just... Hey, happy boy. What? I've decided to join the Army. Whoa! I think it's right for me. What about college? I'm still going to go to college after the Army. I thought you wanted to be an electrical engineer. I'll be learning about electronics, and that'll help me with my engineering. That's a big step, Tom. Dad, listen. I can qualify for the Army College Fund, so the government will help me pay for my tuition when I get out. That way I can help you out for a change. If you qualify, the Army College Fund will help you accumulate as much as $20,100 for tuition. So you're going to be a soldier? Yeah. Here. You can do it. You could work. In the arm. Call for your copy of this free booklet. You've got the spirit. You keep on coming through. Your pride is strong. You won't just make it do. With every job, you leave a little bit of you. We started with an idea, a promise, a commitment to American farming and trucking. We've been building for over 150 years, and now we're honoring it in more ways than ever before. International Harvester. The commitment is forever. Bill Evans can't breathe. My nose is so stuffed, air can't get through. Prove it. Would you try Dristan Long-Lasting Nasal Spray? I'll try anything. It can give you relief in seconds that lasts all day. Can you breathe now? I think so. Prove it. Still breathing freely? Yeah. Prove it. <sighs> Prove it to yourself. Dristan Long-Lasting goes to work in seconds, lasts all day. Or try Dristan Regular. Eagles and the Miami Hurricanes are set to begin in the Orange Bowl. Miami leading the series, and the home team has won each meeting, and the Hurricanes are favored here this afternoon. And again, the weather could be an enormous factor in this game. It has rained hard all day, and that gusting wind will be the problem for Kosar and Flutie. Flutie will have the ball first. Miami will kick it off, but that is Mark Seeley who will put it deep. in this situation frequently you have to have another player hold it because of that gusting wind. Selig wants to try it one more time without somebody holding the ball. Steve Williams and Tyrone Taylor are set back deep for the Eagles. And fielded back in the end zone by Williams. Boston College, of course, is led by the most exciting player in the college game today, Doug Flutie. Strahan is a very dependable performer, and Troy Stratford has been nursing a hamstring injury. Kelvin Martin, an explosive receiver. Phelan is Flutie's roommate and his favorite target. Now Casparillo goes in to replace the injured Eiselman in their starting lineup.
Looney to put it up on first down. And he completes his first pass to the far side, and he hits Phelan. Now, these are the men who will set up front. Sean Regent for the Eagles. He is alongside Mark Bardwell and the coach's son, Jack Picknell. He is the center on this team. Very dependable guard, and perhaps the toughest of their offensive linemen is Mark McDonald. He is an All-American candidate. It is second and five for Flutie and the Eagles. They put Bell in motion. Dumps off to the side to him. And immediately, Doug Flutie opens up with two completed passes right here. John McVeigh made that stop, and speaking of the defense, these are the men. Julio Cortez, a very gritty performer. He's next to Jerome Brown, who's quick. Morris, the hard hitter of the bunch. And Fagan is a very, very dependable. He's probably the leader of that group. And Moss is only a sophomore. He has a bright future. Bernie Kosar said, generally, I don't pay much attention to what the other team's offense is doing, but he said, I just want to stand on the sideline and enjoy Doug Flutie. Flutie now with a third and one yard, and he's got the first down. Handing it off to his running back, Troy Stratford. Now the rest of the defense, Bruce Fleming is at linebacker. McVeigh was in on one of the hits already this afternoon. Reggie Sutton, he is one of their leaders, along with Tolbert Bain. Fullington has intercepted four passes this year, and Calhoun returns from an injury. We've seen three different plays from Boston College in three different formations, just what Doug Flutie wanted to do at the beginning of the game. Complete again. Scott Eiselman. We talked about how Doug Flutie likes to spread the ball around to Brent. We've seen him so throw the ball to Phelan once. He threw the ball to a back, and now he's going to find his big tight end, Gieselman, number 83. Again, he is right in the pocket. He's throwing over defensive linemen. Gieselman, the tight end, has been a big factor in their offense. The tight end position for Boston College has caught 42 passes. So Flutie wants to spread the ball around, get the ball to as many receivers, and his tight end is going to be prominent today. Set in the eye formation this time. Two wide receivers out to Flutie's left. Drops it off to Stratford. Short of midfield at about the 48-yard line. Era, anything defensively that the Hurricanes are doing differently right now against Flutie? Well, no. The thing that is really uh, different here is that the Boston College team is really stretching the defense. You can't quite see it from this angle here, but they're stretching it clear across the field. And of course, he's looking downfield. They're covered, and he just dumps the ball off to his outlet man. It's a little slip screen here. They're really putting pressure on the secondary of the Hurricanes. Left hash mark for Flutie this time. And again, he has thrown it complete to the far side, and that is still another first down. Don't you like the way Boston College likes to come out and establish the run? <laughs> he's thrown every down. Well, that's what we expected from Doug Flutie. Regardless of the weather conditions, he's going to come out and throw the football. Martin is terribly explosive. Ten more yards on the gain. And he has come back home to the state of Florida. First down, the ball is at the Miami 42-yard line for Flutie. The tailback. Right straight ahead with Bell. Penalty flag is down. You see, this is good running on this particular play. As you watch, the defenders are in good position. This is our standard defense that they're going to use with their three deep. There's a great move put on right there. I can't see right from there who missed the tackle in there. Nothing wrong with the defense, just excellent running. But it was set up a number of passes that Boston College set up before. They threw five straight times before they ran the ball. And any time a defense is concerned about a Doug Flutie and throwing, the run is going to be there, particularly draw type of plays and traps where the defense is a little bit soft. Balin is flanked to Flutie's left. Strahan is the setback. 
Flutie to throw again, and he's got to complete to Gieselman. They are short of a first down. Down to the 33, and again it is John McVeigh, the linebacker who is in on the stop for the Hurricanes. The key so far here, Brent, has been that Doug Flutie's got excellent protection from his off offensive line. Now watch what's going to happen here. He's going to drop back. Get the offensive line's got those arm outs. There's nobody there blocking Flutie's vision. Gieselman, again the tight end, finds an open area there in the coverage. Miami is using a lot of man-for-man -man coverage on the short routes underneath, and if you continue to do that, this is the kind of day that Flutie's going to have. Second and short, and Casparilla has checked in at tight end. Flutie with Martin, touchdown, Boston College. said coach we got to love the way BC establishes that run and goes out <laughs> yeah, after a team. Don't you love that? You used to do that didn't you Era? come out yeah, like this? Exactly. Yeah, uh -huh. I ran the ball <laughs> but I didn't have a booty all the time. I understand. <laughs> Kevin Snow adds the extra point. Boston College moves 84 yards in eight plays. Well this is the first throw to Kelvin Martin. Remember Brent what makes Flutie so difficult to defend. He's thrown the ball all over the place. We've seen Phelan catch the ball. Gieselman caught a couple passes on the drive. And now Kelvin Mer uh, Martin, their big receiver, catches the ball for the end zone. Good protection here for Doug Flutie once more. But again, the key here, great protection and a change up in the receivers. Now we come back, we'll watch Bernie Kosar go to work at 7-0 BC. I'm Mr. Goodwrench. Do you know what happens when an oil filter is used too long? It shuts down completely. And all the metal particles and abrasive grit that normally get filtered out go straight to your engine and could possibly cause damage. So, when you're in for an oil change, better let me check and see if you need a new General Motors oil filter, too, just to be sure. Keep that great GM feeling. With me, Mr. Goodwrench. A genuine GM parts. Some things look hard, but once you know the secret, they're easy. It's easy. Some people think financing a new car is hard, but it isn't. It's easy. It's as easy as GMAC. With GMAC, buying or leasing a new GM car or truck is easy. Ask your GM dealer and see how easy it is. Financing a new car may seem hard, but once you know the secret... It's as easy as GMAC. It's easy. in the Orange Bowl, where the Eagles strike the first time they touch the ball. Now it's Kosar's serve coming up as Snow prepares to kick it off for BC. And one of the deep men for Miami is number 21. He's on your all-name team, <laughs> J.C. Pennant. Oh. I don't make it up. There he is. Take a look at the error. You see the circle flyer is Fullington, the freshman safety man. He watch, he's got a habit of coming up to support. He starts back, he's supposed to take the middle third. Now he comes back up, and Bain, the left corner man, is beaten with no support from Fullington. The error was made by number 19. Brent, I'll tell you what, I'm awful happy that error is in charge of defense today, because I don't think there's gonna be much. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait and see now. Hang on, Pat. You haven't done a very good job yet. to throw on first down. Incomplete. He has thrown 23 touchdown passes this year. And here's the freshman who steps in for the injured Highsmith, Melvin Bratton. Very versatile runner is Daryl Oliver. And now the wide receivers, the strength of the offense along with the quarterback, Stanley Shakespeare. And Eddie Brown, a possible number one as far as the pros are concerned. And Willie Smith, who is a tight end, has caught 62 passes. Smith is set to Kosar's right. Here come High, and then Oliver moves out of it. Second and ten. Incomplete. 
Beautiful defense on the play by Neil Eitan, number 43. This was an audible by Bernie Kozar here. He felt he could get Daryl Oliver down the middle. He's done this in the past. He had a couple big plays against Maryland two weeks ago in the same kind of audible. Daryl Oliver out of the backfield. He's got tremendous speed, but you're going to see number 43, Eitan, right there, who made a very good recovery because he was guarding Eddie Brown, but the ball was in the air a little bit too long. Allowed Eitan to come over and make a play. Third and ten. marker is down and it was thrown by the umpire right into the middle of that line where a holding frequently takes place as they were trying to offer Kosar a little extra protection. Now the rest of the hurricane offense in the line Paul Berticelli out of Miami he works next to a fifth-year senior, Mike Moore. Now, Sinclair, the center, must handle one of the best nose guards in football. That is Ruth of Boston College. Alvin Ward and Dave Heffernan on the other side. Heffernan, a very intelligent leader of that offensive line. And as a result of that holding, it will be third and 20, and the ball will be marked down at the Miami 13-yard line. I mentioned at the top of the show, Brent, watch Bernie Kosar's eye. He's a very, very intelligent quarterback. Both of these are, but he audibilizes more than most quarterbacks in college football. All 30, 35 percent of the time, he's going to try to pick apart that defense. Once Brown jumps up and makes a spectacular grab, but was he in bounds? I'm not so he sure. Was that, out. Excuse me, Brent. I'm not so sure I would have taken that uh, penalty because you gave Kosar another opportunity. And uh, he almost pulled it off. Here we see from an end zone shot. One of the things that Boston College is doing is that they're camouflaging their coverage as well, particularly Pereira. And he almost goes up the sideline here. He steps out of bounds, apparently, and just missed getting the first down. Let's take another look at it. Remember in college football, just one foot has to come down. Eddie Brown catches the ball, and it's clearly out of bounds. The official was right there, and Miami will punt. Rick Tootin will punt. There is Martin set to return it. He is the man who scored the touchdown for Boston College. He slips one tackler, but not the second. And Doug Flutie will have it for the second time at the 45 after that 45-yard punt and a three-yard return. Can you guarantee this furnace will save fuel? Guarantee? Guarantee? <laughs> sure, I'll guarantee fuel savings with a recuperative plus. This recuperator makes gas heat super efficient. Less heat up the flue, more for you. What's the catch? No catch. If it doesn't save fuel, Preway will buy it back. Do we have a deal? Guaranteed. Ask your heating contractor about the Recuperative Plus. Today and tomorrow, gas gives you more for your money. In this uncertain and bewildering world of personal computers, the Tandy 2000 stands apart. In power, speed, and graphics, the Tandy 2000 is clearly superior. For service, support, and software, Tandy is clearly superior. Available exclusively at Radio Shack Computer Centers. Compare. You, too, will immediately recognize Tandy technology, service, and support are clearly superior. Monday, every cop's nightmare... Don't make me shoot. ...becomes a haunting reality. Cagney, you killed somebody! Police brutality or self-defense? Cagney and Lacey. Well, it's early. <laughs> Coach Jimmy Johnson conferring with one of the officials, upset about something that transpired on the field. He, of course, came to Miami from Oklahoma State and a couple of weeks ago experienced, I'm sure, the toughest game he's ever been involved in as a head coach when the Hurricanes squandered a 31-point lead. On first down, here he comes throwing again. He's still perfect on the afternoon. Throws to his running back, Ken Bell, coming out of the backfield. You can't double any of Boston College's receivers when they're spreading the wealth around. Again, we, here's Ken Bell who's going to catch his second ball here today. Earlier, he caught a screen pass. This time, they're sending him down the field. Uh, once more, the protection's pretty good. 
and it's funny, you watch Doug Flutie, he has an interesting way after he throws the ball, he gets his body out of the way, he rarely takes a hit after he throws the ball, and also I think it prevents him from getting injured as well. Strahan, now is set in front of Bell. The Eagles come out of the eye, and Flutie moves the pocket himself to the right, and there, it's complete. On the deflection, I was all set to say there's his first incompletion, and Martin makes the spectacular grab. Well, Doug Flutie surprises us all, Brent, don't believe me. Doug Flutie make, makes you defend the entire football field. The f first quarter, he's been dropping back. This time, it's a naked bootleg pass. He gets trying to get the ball to Kelvin Martin. It is tipped, but Martin has the instincts and the ability to make an adjustment and come up with a big catch. The point being, Flutie makes you defend the entire 53 yards of width. His younger brother, Darren Flutie, is now flanked to the left at the bottom of your screen. Hands the ball off. Bolting up the middle was Troy Stratford. First down for the Eagles. This is the, only the second run we have seen from Boston College. We promised you a lot of offense, and believe me, that's what you're going to see it. When you're passing the ball as well as Boston College is, you're going to have some success running sprint draws and draw type of action. Troy Stratford, who was a question mark today with a hamstring injury, he means an awful lot to their offense because he has the capability, Brent, of going the entire distance. But there they used him wisely after a series of passes by Flutie. First and ten, the ball is at Miami's 20. Complete again to Stratford. Five more yards. You can see the problem that there's a real dilemma for the Miami team. How to handle this guy Flutie as we talked at the top of the show. They, they attempted to blitz or bring pressure one time, and that's when they ran that little draw in there. But it's awful tough to handle a guy like Flutie. Too much versatility. You're in charge of stopping him to make today. Oh, well, well it isn't <laughs> over yet, Pat. Give me a chance. We'll hold him under 50. All right. <laughs> Second and five. He is 10 of 10 and averaging better than 10 yards of reception. Thrown for one touchdown already. Now it's 11 of 11. Stratford's got another first down at the Miami 5. I think one of the, as Pat pointed out, uh, Brent, the protection has been superb for Flutie. And here he is, 11 for 11. How do you like that? You can't even do that in practice. I know Hayden couldn't. <laughs> You're right. I couldn't do it in warm-ups either. But the interesting thing is Miami has chosen just to rush three and drop eight uh, arrow. Maybe they're going to have to try to put some pressure on him. Ken Bell is the tailback. Casparilla in motion. This is Bell sweeping to the left. Going for the corner on the second BC touchdown. not be any doubters era about the performance of not only Flutie but this Boston College football team now the way coach Jack Picknell has built a power in the east he's done a remarkable job and this these were uh, that was two excellent drives on the part of the Eagles but I'm wondering right here whether or not uh, Miami is still shell-shocked from that Maryland game Kevin Snow adds his second extra point it's 14 to nothing. You know, when you have to defend the run, you have to be a little bit more aggressive. But the problem with playing, playing Flutie is that he makes you play soft because he throws the ball so doggone well. But here they come right down by the goal line with Ken Bell off tackle. Their offense has the power to run the ball off tackle, yet they can finesse you. Doug Flutie drops back and finds that open man. We'll be back at the Orange Bowl in a moment. We should think about some home insurance. Well, I build them. I don't insure them. But Liberty Mutual covers my place with lots of ways to save on the premium. Liberty Mutual. Save on the premiums. To save with smoke alarms. Put deadbolt locks on the entry doors. There's all kinds of ways to save. It adds up. Good advice. No charge. For a real value in homeowner's insurance, Liberty Mutual is going to be there for you. The heat-resistant material in this cauterizing scalpel helps surgeons perform virtually bloodless operations. 
This portable seismic unit helps explore for oil in places too hard to reach before. This world-class hotel and marina, Fort Lauderdale's Pier 66, is known for its impeccable service. What do they all have in common? Phillips Petroleum's commitment to excellence. That's performance. From Phillips Petroleum, you'll find performance in everything we do. Tomorrow, traditional powers Louisville and Indiana clash in NCAA basketball. Then Notre Dame and USC renew their spirited football rivalry. Tomorrow on CBS Sports. What about Miami's defense that time? Well, as you'll see here, number one, the circled player is the contained man. They get outside the contain. One of the things when you're playing football, you've got to squeeze everything back to the inside. He gets blocked clear there, as you see, has no chance, and he gets outside the leverage. But two no. beautiful, excuse me, two beautifully executed drives by the Eagles. Unbelievable. Time left in the first quarter here in the Orange Bowl. Flutie has handled the ball twice and has scored both times, and Miami does not have a yard of offense yet here in the opening quarter. J.C. Penny and Daryl Oliver are set deep for snow. Oliver runs up, feels into the seven, and fumbles. Picks it back up and stepped out of bounds near the 20-yard line, about the 21-yard line, and here comes Kosar. Big day tomorrow. I want to remind everybody that the road to Lexington starts on CBS with the Louisville Cardinals taking on Indiana Hoosiers, coached by Bobby Knight. And of course, at halftime, we'll get an update from Frank Lieber. And the two fellows with me in the booth uh, know a little bit about yeah. this rivalry the Fighting Irish against Whew. the Trojans. That's going to be a good one, too. Right? Coming after you, Hayden. <laughs> again and again, huh? It's been a long time, but we're coming after you. I understand. Here's Kosar. First down for Miami. He hands off to Bratton, and no daylight. Met right there. Mike Ruth was one of the defenders, number 68. And if you get an opportunity, watch the big nose guard from Boston College. He's one of the finest nose guards in the country. He wants to become a priest, but he said he may have to slow that up for a time while he plays a little professional football. Bench is something like 550 pounds. I hate to arm wrestle him. You see the size of his arms? <laughs> Who could you arm wrestle, Hayden? <laughs> Oliver to the 25-yard line, where it'll be third and seven for Kosar. Well, Miami, Miami wants to obviously keep the ball out of Doug Flutie's hands. One way of doing that, of course, is by controlling the ball, controlling the clock. But really, Brent, that is not Miami's personality. They are a throwing football team. We've seen them try to run the ball here twice in a row. They've only picked up three yards. That's exactly right, Pat. They've got to keep the ball away from that explosive Boston College offense. They're dynamite. Brown is to Kosar's left. There was movement in that offensive line. Now Boston College is complaining bitterly because they don't think, yeah, there it is. Well, this is one thing. Miami's been penalized 84 times coming in to today's game. Now, if my mathematics is correct, that's almost eight times a game. It's an awful lot to overcome, particularly when you're down by 14 Legal points. procedure, lineman moving against Miami. We're going to play third down. Paul Schmidt, our referee with the call. Third and 11 for Kosar, and Eddie Brown, the dangerous one, is set out to Kosar's left. They double the two men on the outside. Complete to Brown. At the 45, midfield, and steps out of bounds at the 42. He's so dangerous after he catches the ball, and that was a 37-yard game. Boston College deployed into a jam position. You see the wideouts. They're trying to double up on him. But Kosar got an awful lot of time to throw the football. Brown gets into the seam, the deep seam. Look at the hole in here. Kosar has enough time. Great catch by Brown. Not only that, he can run with the football. Kosar is explosive as well. And here they come. Boy, he picked up two nice blocks by his wide receivers there, one being Stanley Shakespeare. Pat, there's a first down for the Hurricanes now. BC 41 yard line. This is Oliver. And the defense led by Chuck Gorecki, number 95, closed down. 
you know, we, we talk so much about Doug Flutie. You don't realize how good Boston College's defense is as well. It's a very good defensive team. They put some pressure on people. They played a big league schedule the last few years and done very well. They have their stiffest test today, I believe, in Bernie Kozak. Sets it up beautifully in the screen. This is Platten. Gets down to the 30-yard line for a first down. That second effort by Platten earned Miami the first down. Romanowski, the linebacker, finally brought him down. Football is very much a game of momentum. Boston College had it, but Miami now is trying to get it back. And one way of doing it is throw, throwing some short, safe passes. They felt that Melvin Bratton is a very good receiver. They want to get him the ball out of the backfield, both on screen passes like this, as well as downfield. But the momentum here is now in Miami's favor. As soon as Kosar turns his back on the defense, Boston College said they're coming with the delay. And that time they read it perfectly. They said that Kosar will never turn around and throw back at you once he shows you his back. And here you can watch the linebackers looking in to try and read. There is the turn. And that's when they're taught to close in. Ruth quickly moving over to cut off that seam and the linebacker pressing in for the right-hand side. Good defensive team. Complete, and it's Brown again working the sideline. But he is short of the first down, and over there was Tony Thurman. Brent, just as, as Boston College came out, as we said, and they were going to change formations and throw the ball around, so is Miami staying true to form and trying to throw the ball early in the football game to its wide receivers. This is the second or third time he's gotten the ball to Eddie Brown, this time on an outcut. It looks like he did pick up the first down. He got one foot in, actually got two feet in. He did Very a beautiful job of getting that first down, Pat. And when Eddie Brown has the speed that he has, you obviously have to respect him deep. He saw him catch 137-yarder, and that allows you to throw those outcuts. BC 18, fumble, recovered by Kosar. Remember, that's a defensive scheme that Boston College wanted to use. Mike Ruth on the center, Sinclair. They felt they could back him up into Kosar, maybe create some exchange problems between Ruth, uh, the center, the nose guard from Boston College against Sinclair, the center for Miami. One of the problems also for the defense on both sides is that they can both grab big chunks of yardage. Yardage, just because it's second and ten now doesn't mean anything, or third and ten. They can grab it in a hurry. Brown is to Kozar's right, and Stanley Shakespeare goes to his left. Movement again, and penalty flag comes down. the right guard move, right guard or right tackle of the Hurricanes. Well, you're right, and this is, as we mentioned earlier, uh, Coach Persegian, Miami's had a problem with this all year long, came in with 84 penalties. <laughs> officials are saying... The defense was threatened and the offense came up. No fair. That's fair. It's Thanksgiving weekend, yeah, right? Offsetting penalties, I guess. It's unusual in that situation, Coach. <laughs> That's right change that rule so that the burden goes to the offense. Any kind of movement there. Jack McNeil is not sure that he understands it. <laughs> <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> Second and 11 for the Hurricane. On the reverse, it's Eddie Brown, and he's got daylight. 15. Inside the 10. First down for the Hurricanes at the six-yard line. Oh, he's explosive. A 13-yard in the round. A very, very nice change of pace by Miami. We've seen some off-tackle runs. We've seen Bernie Kosar drop you back into the pocket. Now they get into scoring position, and they put some more pressure on you. They give it to Eddie Brandt Brown, the man with outstanding speed on the outside. Look at number 50, Mike Moore out there in front of him. The interesting thing to me, Brent, was the Boston College team feels that they can run a lot of reverses against Miami's defense, but they turn the tables here. You know, this 
does not Miami strong suit the running game. As a matter of fact, they're only averaging 121 yards a game compared to 307 passing. They can get the big chunks of yardage, but down here they'll probably try to pound it in here. But they may miss Alonzo Highsmith, who was injured in the Maryland game, and he was their big running back that got that short yardage. Let's see whether or not Bratton can get it. He is number five. Top for the touchdown. Number 52, the right tackle. Helped open that hole. And then Bratton did the rest by going over the top and extending his arm on into the end zone. And this is Greg Cox. Ooh, we got a little ricochet <laughs> yeah. on that one. But it counts just the same. Well, Aaron, Mer Melvin Bratton answered the question about Highsmith's injury because he did get the tough short yardage here and over the top. Pretty good penetration there by BC, but that tremendous leaping ability that allowed Bratton to break the plane of the goal line. But the BC defense really guessed correctly. Watch them shift to their left. They're expecting Bratton to go that way. You're going to see him shift, move back a little bit. But Bratton was too tough over the top. Very good offensive line surge. The result, touchdown. Flutie's turn coming up. To photograph the Earth's resources from the air, they say you need a camera that can see through clouds. Bad chance. Can't be done. But Goodyear said, Let's try a new way. And developed a special kind of radar. Goodyear? Goodyear. Goodyear. Yeah, the Aerospace Group. Radar that not only sees through clouds, but gives you pictures as sharp as some cameras. Good thing we didn't listen to what they say. Those nuggets, some hamburger places serve are actually processed chicken. Excuse me, but what was that in there? It's chicken. Chicken. Processed. P processed? That's like when they take a lot of chickens and assemble the respective parts. What parts? What parts? Different parts. Parts is parts. Wendy's chicken sandwich is pure boneless breast of chicken. Moist and perfect and not processed. As I hear tell, all the parts are crammed into one big part. Fused. Yeah. Then the one big part is cut up into little pieces parts. And parts is parts. Pure boneless breast of chicken for Wendy's kind of people. Sunday, an NFL doubleheader featuring Philadelphia against St. Louis and San Francisco against New Orleans or other regional games. Sunday on CBS Sports. Darrell, what about the BC defense? Did they let down after going up by two touchdowns? No, not really. I think one must, have, must face the fact that these two teams, when they play, average about 900 yards in a contest. Right now, the first quarter isn't even over, and they're up to 227. They're just two great offensive teams. Seelig to kick it off for the Canes. Williams and Taylor are back deep for the Eagles. And one of the short men fields it in front of Williams and gets back to the 18-yard line. A reminder that at the conclusion of the game, Pat and Aaron and I will select a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each of the teams, and Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of both Miami and Boston College, and there is a penalty flag down. a personal foul against Miami. I believe that's their fourth penalty here in the first quarter. And as a result, Doug Flutie and BC will come up to the 35-yard line. Flutie is 11 of 11 in this first quarter. And he's already passed for 118 yards as he closes in on still another record. Fake to Stratford, moves to the left, repositions a receiver, and hits Gieselman. Out of bounds, no completion. Bernie 
Kosar, who directed Miami to its first touchdown, has pulled them to within seven. There's the pass distribution. We've talked about that so much here at the top of the show in the first half. Look how he's, Flutie is spreading the ball around. That's what makes them difficult to defend. And then after he's thrown the ball around to a number of different people, they run a draw or a trap, and you've got a halfback in the defensive backfield. That was his first incompletion of the game. Stratford and Strahan are set behind him in the eye, and Flutie will sprint out to the right. To Martin, incomplete. Brent, the coverage is a little bit better in this series of downs for the Hurricanes. I think they're getting more familiar with what Flutie does and where the receivers are coming from. They did make a dramatic change in the coverage of their underneath people, the linebackers and the outside backers, along with the strong safety. Hadn't done it for a number of weeks. Here we take another look at the entire defense. You can see the coverage is much better here. Of course, he slipped and fell right there. I didn't realize that. I guess that was uh, Callahan or Calhoun that slipped and fell, number two. Darren Flutie was the motion man on the right-hand side. Incomplete. And for the first time this afternoon, Doug Flutie is stopped. Daniel Stubbs was the defensive back. I told you my defense would come through. <laughs> You're finally getting it going, aren't you, Coach? Hang it in there. <laughs> Seven, Boston College leading Miami. Steve Peach. A quarterback on this BC team will punt. No one plays much quarterback except number 22. That's Eddie Brown. Steps out of bounds there at the 30-yard line. Well, he is quick, and you can just tell that when every time he gets the, hand, as the ball in his hands, which he's good on the dance floor. Uh, it reminds me of my own youth. Ah. Uh. Here are the bowl games coming up on CBS. The Sun Bowl on December 22nd. That'll come your way at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And then the Peach Bowl on December 31st at 3 p.m. And, of course, the big one, the Cotton Bowl, which will bring you Boston College against probably Texas. But they still have to beat Baylor and Texas A&M. Now it's Bernie Kosar and Miami going back to work, trailing B.C. 14-7. Throw on first down. Time. Brown. Down to the 48-yard line, covered by Todd Russell. But if you give him that much time, Brown will pull away. Or, uh... Just too much time. Absolutely too much time. Boston College cannot stay with Brown that long. This is Bernie Kosar's version of his scramble. We've seen Doug Flutie scramble around a little bit, but he steps up into the carpet, pocket, buys himself a little bit more time, and you both said it. Eddie Brown is so quick that even though he had double coverage on him, he was allowed to find a dead spot, an open area. Kosar delivered the ball. They get off another play, and it's the delay with Bratton to the 47, and that will bring the first quarter to an end. It's 14-7 B.C., and we'll return after this commercial break and a word from your local stations. When an alkaline battery goes dead, you throw it away and buy a new one. This is a GE rechargeable. When it goes dead, you recharge it. It costs more than batteries you throw away, but lasts up to four years. Used 10 hours a week, this toy would use over 300 long-life batteries to just two GE rechargeables. So if you're still throwing away batteries, you're throwing away a lot of money. Strong workers will soon arrive to build. In years past, some would fall. So this Minnesota construction company asked Liberty Mutual for help. They worked with our own loss prevention people. Together they developed better safety controls and a system that makes even this a safer place to work. Liberty Mutual's loss prevention people work across the nation. One way we're going to be there for you. This is CBS. That's my competition. He's telling everyone he has the lowest prices. If only his mother could see him now. Only Tire Kingdom has the lowest prices. I make that statement based on facts, not fiction. 
This independent research study proved that Tire Kingdom has the lowest tire prices in Florida. Not only does Tire Kingdom have the best prices, but also the widest selection anywhere. At Tire Kingdom, we sell quality tires for less. Less than everybody. And we've got the proof. Southeast. The difference you've been looking for. your hand at the Wheel of Fortune 7.30 tonight here on Channel 4. As if on cue, the sun has started to peek through just a bit here in Miami. This is the brightest it has been all day down here. It's rained hard. And the lights have been used to help the players see down here. And of course, this is the scene of a Monday night game coming up between the Dolphins and the Jets. And they use PAT turf. And we'll see how it holds up the wear and tear after this game is over. This is a second and nine. Miami trailing BC, 14-7. Bernie Kosar dropping back to put it up again. Complete to Bratton. And he almost took away a first down when he dipped back, but I believe he picked it up. Here are the two quarter stats. Look at the yards passing. We promise you an offensive show. They're going to continue to throw the football throughout the whole football game. Turnovers, even though bad weather conditions, they have not turned the ball over. A pretty even first quarter. I think also the important thing was that Flutie was able to drive his team for two scores into what wind we have, the swirling wind. He will have the wind with him in this second quarter. They are going to measure. Bratton's inexperience showed in that sequence. He had the first down. Then he dipped back to try and pick up more yardage. And when he tried to get back, they cut him down just that short. Bernie Kozar's also had a very good first quarter. I'm certainly not disappointed with either one of these. Different styles, but they both get the job done. They're not getting to him either, are they, Pat? Not putting much pressure on him. You're right. Short yardage formation by Kozar. And it's Bratton for the first down. Fumble. And it goes out of bounds. Miami's ball. David Pereira was over there for BC, but he could not get a handle before it went out of bounds. So often on short yardage, if the first, if the back can get through the initial wave, and here he gets picks up a nice block and gets outside, and then really tries to run over Pereira. The ball does pop out. The BC players are there to try to make the recovery. Didn't have possession before he went out of bounds. Actually, didn't have possession at all. That was number 36, Peter Holy. But a first down for the Hurricanes. After that 16-yard gain, ball is inside the 25. First down, they run off tackle to the right side. David Thomas made the stop on Warren Williams, who has checked in. Surprised that Miami actually has run the ball a little bit better here uh, in this last couple of drives, Era. Very, not... very effective against that defense. They were trying to put Kosar and anticipated a pass, and it was a good call. First down inside the 10. And again, it was Peter Holy. They're really making it tough on the defense because Kosar is mixing it up. They've been principally a passing team. They're deployed to, start, to come in and put a heavy rush on Kosar. Look at the blocking. Look at the hole. They're making it very difficult on the Eagles. They're making it tough on me defensively. <laughs> and the other thing they're doing is they're keeping Doug Flutie on the bench. defense you know that Mike Ruth is down there someplace on that stop <laughs> it's a pretty good guess 
But they have not been able to get to Kosar. We expected Ruth to be able to get to Sinclair, but Ian Sinclair, number 76, the Hurricane Center, is doing a pretty good job on him because they have not sacked Kosar, pressured him maybe a little bit once or twice. Open is Smith, the tight end, and he drills him for the touchdown. 